After Jesus ascended to heaven, the era of the church began. The remaining twelve disciples had to make decisions on their own, gathering together to pray and making decisions as a group. In such a context, Paul summarized the teachings of Jesus and provided guidance and standards of judgment to many churches through letters. During this time, the Bible also records the active roles of female disciples in the early church. In this instance, we would like to look at the women who became faithful disciples in the early church and served as encouragement to their brothers. Paul met a Jew named Aquila in Corinth. Aquila's wife was named Priscilla, and together with her husband, she worked as a tent maker. They originally lived in Rome, but they came to Corinth after Emperor Claudius issued an edict expelling the Jews. Since Paul also made a living as a tent maker, he stayed with the couple and worked together with them. Paul stayed with them for a year and a half, during which time the Corinthian church grew significantly. After this long stay, Paul set out for Syria, and Priscilla and Aquila accompanied him. On the way, Priscilla and Aquila parted ways with Paul and met a Jew named Apollos in Ephesus. Apollos was well versed in the scriptures but had only received John's baptism. Apollos was eloquent and accurately spoke about Jesus. When Priscilla and Aquila saw Apollos speaking boldly in the synagogue one day, they invited him into their home and explained the way of God to him more fully. The Bible does not mention how Aquila and Priscilla came to believe in Jesus Christ. However, it is clear that Paul got along well with them, worked with them, and lived with them. Their knowledge was evidently recognized by Paul. According to biblical custom, men are usually mentioned first, followed by women, and the order typically reflects age. That Priscilla's name often appears before her husband suggests that she was deeply devout and zealous in her faith. Paul mentions her name as Priscilla or Prisca in his letters, indicating that she was a capable woman whom Paul trusted. In a place called Joppa, there was a female disciple named Tabitha, which is translated as Dorcas in Greek. She was known for doing many good deeds and acts of charity. However, she became ill and died. The people washed her body and placed it in an upstairs room. The disciples in Joppa heard that Peter was nearby and sent for him. Asking him to come without delay, Peter immediately set out and arrived in Joppa. When Peter went upstairs, the widows who had been helped by Dorcas spoke to him, weeping. They showed Peter the robes and clothing that Dorcas had made for them while she was alive. Peter realized how much Dorcas had supported the widows. He asked everyone to leave the room, knelt down, and prayed to God. Then, turning to Dorcas, he said, Tabitha, arise. Immediately, she opened her eyes, saw Peter, and sat up. Peter took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. He then called the believers and the widows, showing them that she was alive. This event became known throughout Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. When Peter arrived in Joppa, Dorcas had already passed away, but those who guided him were the widows, the most vulnerable in Jewish society. These widows were so poor that they couldn't even afford undergarments. Although Dorcas herself was not wealthy enough to buy undergarments and clothes for the widows, she did her best to make them with her own hands. Her selfless dedication made her beloved by all. Although the Bible does not record Dorcas's direct words or actions, Peter understood everything when he saw the sorrow of these widows and heard of Dorcas's good reputation. In the United States, there are several organizations named Dorcas that support single mothers and widows. Paul stopped in the city of Sencrii on his way to Syria. Sencrii is a neighboring town to Corinth. It is written that there was a church in Sencrii and that a female deacon named Phoebe was there. In his letters to Timothy, Paul writes about the qualifications of a deacon. These qualifications include being dignified, not deceitful, not addicted to much wine, and not greedy for dishonest gain. He also writes about female deacons, stating that they should be dignified, not slanderous, self-controlled, and faithful in all things. It is presumed that Phoebe was a woman who met these conditions, and was someone whose faith Paul recognized. Later, in his letter to the Romans, Paul strongly recommends Phoebe to the church in Rome. Although she appears only briefly in the Bible, there was a female deacon whose work and faith were so highly regarded by Paul that he recommended her to other churches. When Paul went to Philippi, he met a woman named Lydia at a riverside place of prayer on the Sabbath. 
She was a merchant of purple cloth from the city of Thyatira and a worshipper of God. The Lord opened her heart to accept the message about Christ that Paul was sharing. Later, when Paul and Silas cast out an evil spirit from a woman who was possessed, the men who had been profiting from her abilities accused Paul and Silas before the Roman authorities. When they were about to be flogged, it was discovered that Paul was a Roman citizen, so Paul and Silas were released. They then took refuge in Lydia's house and continued their ministry. Lydia was likely wealthy because she dealt in purple cloth, a luxury item. She was in a position to provide financial support to Paul and Silas. Typically, a synagogue would be established as a place of gathering and prayer when ten people were present, but it seems there were not even ten people in Philippi who believed in the God of the Jews. Despite the small number, Lydia emerged as a woman who supported the apostles. Paul had a young disciple named Timothy, who was born to a Greek father and a Jewish mother. Timothy was very devout, and Paul mentions in his letters that this faith was influenced by his mother and grandmother. The grandmother's name was Lois, and the mother's name was Eunice. It is likely that Eunice herself was raised under the solid upbringing of Lois. Growing up with a reverent and God-fearing heart, this is why their names are mentioned explicitly in Paul's letters to Timothy. Providing insight into the environment in which Timothy was raised. From the moment Paul first met Timothy, he desired to take him along on his journeys. And he circumcised Timothy so that he would be accepted by the Jews. Timothy, who accompanied Paul, gained his deep trust, and his name appears in most of Paul's subsequent letters. Paul recognized that the strong faith Timothy had was closely related to the proper upbringing by his mother, Eunice, and grandmother, Lois. It is believed that Timothy was quite young when he first met Paul, possibly even in his teens. He traveled with Paul, gained a wealth of experience, and eventually became the pastor of the church in Ephesus. Though it might have been challenging to become a church leader at such a young age, Timothy had the unwavering faith nurtured by his mother Eunice and grandmother Lois. In the greetings at the beginning of the letter to the Romans, Junia is mentioned as someone, noted among the apostles. Since the name Junia was often used for women, it is believed that she was a woman. She came to believe in Christ before Paul and was known to the apostles, including Timothy, Silas, Mark, and Barnabas. Although it is currently debated whether Junia was a woman or a man, there was a woman from Paul's homeland who was imprisoned as he was. If that is the case, it would not be surprising for her to be respected and talked about among the apostles. At the end of the letter to the Romans, many names are mentioned, some of which appear only in this passage, and little is known about them. However, the first names mentioned Phoebe and Prisca are women, indicating that there were many trusted, strong, and capable women in the early church. Although there are passages in the Bible that advise against women taking a leading role, this does not mean that women were demeaned or disrespected. On the contrary, Paul treated women equally and recognized women like Phoebe and Prisca for their efforts in the Lord's work. If someone was needed in the Roman church, the female deacon Phoebe from Sencrii was the first person recommended. In addition to these women, other female names are mentioned, suggesting that Paul treated women fairly. While he opposed women teaching in some cases, there is no indication that he looked down on them. Especially with Prisca, Paul seemed to respect her as an equal worker in the church. Thank you for reading to the end. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing to the channel.